This is Michael Henning from the Copenhagen Voice. I'm at Grundtvig's uh, Folk High School in Europe, where there's a debate on the EU uh, interest in the Irish referendum. With me is Margaret Alfin, who is a member of the European Summit for Social People's, so the People's Party. Margaret Alfin. And the Green Group. And the Green Group. Uh, two thirds of votes in a social liberal uh, poll at the moment indicate that the, they want the euro introduced in Denmark as a national currency. Do you see this happening in the next five years? Well, it's, it's really difficult. I think that if uh, the Prime Minister introduces a debate and makes it qualify, the Parliament is done, uh, and you can convince uh, at least the left side that uh, the best way to uh, influence uh, what we are criticizing, you know, the very strict rules on the, the Gross and Stability Pact. And the best way to influence that is to be a member of at the third phase. You know, we have to be first in Denmark. And then I could imagine that things could happen with our party. And if our party uh, is in favor, uh, there's a chance. But I would really warn uh, the, uh, uh, the Prime Minister, he should not take a referendum on the Euro if he's not quite sure to win it. Because if it's for the first time, is rejected. Then, you know, forget about it. But we've had this financial uh, problem in the uh, crisis in the past couple of months where the EU has done some things on the Euro, Euro basis in different countries, Denmark and Britain, for example, have done their own. Uh, but you know, all countries have to do their own. Yes, but would it have been better if everybody had been in the, in the Euro? Uh, for me, it's difficult to answer that question. Originally, you know, in 2000, uh, 2000, I voted in favor, although my party was against. But uh, it could have been because I was surrounded by no votes. Because if I'd been joined the Yes camp, which was as bad in their campaign as a no campaign, I might have voted no. So, you know, I'm very open minded. And uh, I think that uh, the argument using the crisis uh, is not a very, up to now at least, that's been very convincing. Uh, and that shouldn't be the argument. It should be, no, it could be, but it shouldn't uh, be because of the crisis. It should be because we want to contribute to the common policy in the EU. What about the other opt outs that Denmark has? Yeah. Will they be voted on those five years perhaps? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, one of them is you know, now enshrined in the uh, Amsterdam Treaty, so the ones two. The uh, 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 concerning. Uh, all civil rights, uh, civil, uh, civil, uh, civil rights, uh, uh, not, neither no. civil liberties, you know, we, they, we are covered for that, uh, 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 civil uh, justice, of course, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. justice and also asylum yeah. and uh, refugees and so on. And um, I hope people get, you know, uh, my party really wants to get rid of the two of us and against in this one. And uh, I very much hope that they will have the referendum. The problem is that. I think not with the defense, uh, they big now big support in Denmark. But still we need a good campaign in order to make sure this is not a European army, you know, the, the European uh, territorial defense is not covered uh, in, in this area. That's, that's still, according to, it's peacekeeping and sometimes, you know, a peace creating its military, you know, no doubt. Uh, but it's linked to a civil base, civil base security strategy. And uh, as it is now, Denmark is the only country without a veto to a territorial defense, EU defense, because that could only be introduced if all countries were in favor of that. And Denmark has explicitly said in, their, in our opt uh, out that we will not stop the others in continuing, which means that we don't have this veto right. But apart from that, I really hope that will happen. And, uh, and <laughs> I said <agree. laughs> <laughs> 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 the interview was just me. I'm nearly uh, Last question. We don't know how Alan no, will say, I could just say that one thing more, and that is that if uh, uh, I would like the whole, uh, the whole uh, uh, opt-out, you know, uh, be abolished. Yes, yeah, abolished. Uh, also on the uh, on the asylum seekers, I know that the government is really you know uh, they hope that they could get the the Lisbon Treaty because then they can keep a kind of a, of access system and that will not be very good but still SF will support it because just to make some rules for how we could make the work under this uh, new opt-outs which the government has negotiated at um, Lisbon Treaty.
does that mean in reality that you believe no EU men should have opt-outs? No, I couldn't say that. You know, for some of us, it's only our own vote. You know, for Denmark, uh, the opt-out we have, uh, we have now is, you know, our own, and it doesn't disturb the rest of the EU. You have some opt-outs. I think the British opt-out on, on social advice is very bad, because it, that's undermining the common system. The Irish on, uh, uh, on, uh, on well, civil liberties in Ireland, uh, well, no, it, that, that works. That works. It doesn't disturb uh, the rest of the EU, but the, the British one does disturb the rest of the EU, and you should not have doubts which really block a, a, a common decision making in the EU. So we, the EU countries should work together as much yes, as possible. Yes, yes, of course we should. And you know, I'm really strongly against any kind of two, because that you know blocks the, the dialogue. And the, if you don't have a veto, but you can vote, then you have the dialogue. And there's a big tradition of consensus uh, strategy in the EU. And that's why we you know, can feel very safe if we get rid of all kinds of this veto. My great Alvin, thank you very much indeed. This is Michael Delane for the Copenhagen Voice in the Hitler World. Thank you very much. Well, that's my question. Uh,